We're now to the crypto king who is now the crypto convict headed for prison. Former billionaire Sam Bankman Fried has been sentenced to 25 years in prison for stealing billions of dollars from his crypto exchange platform, FTX. Now, prosecutors had wanted 50 years in prison. They say Bankman Fried defrauded tens of thousands of customers from around the world, spending over $8 billion of their savings on his luxury homes and risky investments. Last November, a jury found him guilty on seven counts of fraud, conspiracy, and money laundering. Bankman Fried founded FTX back in 2019, and it quickly grew into one of the largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world. Millions of users logged on to buy and sell crypto tokens, such as Bitcoin. Billions of dollars passed through the site every single day. Now, customers thought that their cash was safe, but Bankman Fried used that cash to fund his own personal investments and also to prop up his losses. When news broke that FTX was on shaky financial ground, people tried to withdraw their funds, a run on the bank, you could say, but their money was long gone. When FTX filed for bankruptcy, Bankman Fried says that his own personal fortune of some $16 billion had been wiped out too. During his sentencing, the former billionaire fell short of apologizing, claiming he just made some honest, simple mistakes. He said, it haunts me every day. I made a series of bad decisions. They weren't selfish decisions. They weren't selfless decisions. They were bad decisions. My next guest tonight is regarded as one of the most prominent cryptocurrency researchers and critics. I'm pleased to welcome back to the program Molly White. Molly, it's good to see you. 25 years in prison. Did Sam Bankman free? Did he get what he deserved? I think he did. Um, a, a prison sentence of that length is pretty monumental, even though it's less than what the prosecutors requested. And I think it will, you know, provide that kind of deterrent effect to others who are potentially thinking of trying the same types of schemes. Um, it will certainly prevent him from trying again in the near future, which I think is one of the most important things. Do you think that there are other Sam Bankman Freeds out there already in the cryptocurrency world who are already, you know, pushing and, and leading Ponzi schemes galore? Unfortunately, I do. Um, the cryptocurrency industry is full of people like Sam Bankman Freed, and it's full of fraudulent enterprises like FTX. And there hasn't been much change in the regulatory landscape, especially in the United States, that I think would prevent such a disaster from happening again. So, why is you know, that? I'm, I'm happy to see. Why, why hasn't there you, yeah. been a change to the regulations? Yeah, why do you think There's that we've been seen nothing? Very Attempts to pass new regulation have been pretty unsuccessful thus far. Um, the you know legislature has been very torn on how they want to go about this, and attempts by regulatory agencies like the Securities and Exchange Commission have begun to meet with resistance from lawmakers because crypto has become such a political issue in the United States. Um, and so I think any changes to regulation are going to be very hard fought, and, and thus far none have really emerged. I mean, you would think we're talking about money here, but it's not just money. Explain for our viewers, why is it political in the United States now? There's a very strong ideology behind crypto that plays into some of the political issues that are very hot topics in the United States around whether or not governments should be able to interfere with people's financial lives, you know, whether or not there should be more of a hands-off approach to how people handle their own finances. And that has become sort of, crypto has become a political issue um, in that sense mm. where particularly people on the Republican side of the spectrum, uh, favor sort of a hands-off approach or even mm -hmm. one that would encourage the industry, um, whereas some think that strong regulation is needed and more government intervention is needed. So it's, it's become very partisan. Yeah, I mean, it's a, kind of like a weapon against the deep state, if you will. You have been called one of the world's most um, yeah, outspoken, prominent cryptocurrency critics. What are in your opinion, the, the, the biggest challenges or the biggest issues that you have with this industry? 
Well, the prevalence of fraud and the scams in the industry are, it's honestly remarkable how prevalent it is. Um, and because there is so little regulatory oversight of the industry, there's very little uh, disclosure around the types of things people are being told to put their money into. And so people don't always even know who's behind the project that they're getting involved with, how the business works, how the money is being stored, what protections they have if something goes wrong. Um, and so as a result, people are, you know, taking enormous risks, even when they are just being told that someone's going to hold on to the crypto for them, which was mm -hmm. kind of the FTX, um, you know, marketing. And so people are being told, you know, that they can invest in this new asset class while the industry itself is full of people who are trying to steal that, those assets away from people, yeah, but um, we, which we, is largely we, where my concerns lie. Yeah, and, but also, we know from the very beginning that if we invest in cryptocurrencies on these platforms, we know that these platforms, they are not acting in a fiduciary role, right? Um, that's not their responsibility. Um, are you saying that they should be required to be a fiduciary or to look out for the interests of the investor? Well, I actually think that it's not that well known that these platforms aren't acting mm. as fiduciaries. There were mm. people in the, this very lawsuit who said that they believed that FTX w had a fiduciary duty to them. Uh -huh. um, and so, you know, there's there's very little transparency in the industry around what these platforms even are and what can be expected from them. I mean, there have been other collapses where people genuinely believed that these cryptocurrency companies were on the same level as banks and might even have the types of um, depository insurance that you could expect from a bank in the United States is absolutely not true. Mm -hmm. But that is how these companies will market themselves to people who don't know enough to go find out for sure. And there, there isn't really a regulator making sure that this isn't happening. You, you speak a lot about, about the hype that surrounded cryptocurrencies and that still remains, by the way. You've said that it's similar to the hype that we are currently seeing around artificial intelligence. Tell me about that. Well, the tech industry gen generally goes through these hype cycles where people get very excited about a new piece of technology or a new industry. And what is being said about those technologies becomes very different from the actual reality of those technologies. So we saw it in 2021 or so with the emergence of the idea of Web3, uh, which promised that blockchains were going to be the solution to all kinds of problems mm -hmm. on the web, despite the fact that the technology was not well suited to it. And I think we're seeing something very similar with artificial intelligence now, where people are talking about artificial intelligence as, you know, soon becoming something that can solve practically any problem right. you can think of, you know, curing cancer and uh, resolving gro global warming. Yeah. Um, and that, again, is very divorced from the current state of the technology. Yeah. So I think there's definitely parallels between the hype cycle we saw with crypto and Web3 and the hype cycle now we're seeing with AI. Yeah, I think you bring up a good point. I, and I think people would love to see AI give us a cure for cancer. I don't think people would welcome um, losing their jobs in the process through AI. Right. We will see. Now let's cross over to our financial correspondent, Jens Korte, who has been following this story in New York for us. Uh, Jens, this is one of the biggest financial fraud cases in tech, in the tech industry. Uh, tell us more about the case. Yeah, definitely is. And what we heard already from uh, the judge today is uh, that uh, Sam Bankman-Fried actually perjured um, himself, uh, meaning that could higher uh, the sentence. Uh, the, the sentence uh, theoretically, we are speaking of, of a maximum of um, over a hundred years, but that is pretty um, unlikely. What I'm hearing, maybe 25, 30 years uh, could be uh, what would the judge is saying. We will learn uh, more um, uh, today. And then uh, the defense actually is saying that a lot of the money that was lost has been recovered by now, also partly because uh, cryptocurrencies have been um, on the rise quite a bit in the past uh, couple of months. And that's why the defense is asking for just five uh, to six years. Now, uh, what can you tell us about the rise and fall of the FTX uh, and Sam Bankman-Fried? 
Yeah, well, I mean, it is uh, definitely one of the most spectacular uh, cases that I've also witnessed um, here in my time, uh, during my time in uh, New York. I mean, Bernie Madoff uh, maybe was uh, another one. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, what uh, what we did see, it was a, a massive uh, fraud uh, case um, in an industry that is still um, rather um, young. Um, but now this uh, sentencing, um, yeah, everybody is, is waiting for this outcome probably in the next couple of minutes. Now, prosecutors have accused Bankman Freed of stealing billions of dollars from thousands of customers and investors. How did he manage to get away with that for so long without getting caught? Well, I mean, we've seen that in similar cases so often. Um, you can actually uh, play that game quite a bit um, until investors want their money back. And that's probably what happened at some point. And then um, also because um, we saw um, FTX uh, collapsing during the so-called crypto uh, winter, the money just wasn't there. And that's when uh, the whole thing um, came uh, to light. So that's always the big problem once uh, investors and not just a few, but many want their money back. Then uh, we see um, those fraud cases, um, yeah, seeing uh, the uh, light of day. Now, where does this leave the already very volatile crypto market and the whole industry at attached to it? Well, I mean, that is, uh, to me, also quite um, stunning uh, because um, with not just this scandals, we had a couple of scandals, we had a couple of bankruptcies, but the crypto market actually uh, didn't seem to bother at all. I did mention the crypto winter earlier. Uh, so when F FTX uh, collapsed, um, so uh, Bitcoin stood at about $17,000. As we speak today, Bitcoin's trade at $70,000. Um, so all those scandals, all those bankruptcies, Bankruptcies didn't um, harm um, the crypto market uh, itself at all. And also regulators uh, recently um, have been much more open uh, to the crypto uh, world than they used to be a year or two ago. The financial correspondent Jens Korte in New York for us. Thank you, Jens.